so good evening all of you uh, who have joined us today for this webinar day 5 of uh, uh, homeopathy a holistic healing organized by kavita holistic approach ka homeopathy study group and homeopathy 360 for today's session before we begin i would like to request our uh, dignitary uh, professor uh, rajna ma'am to please begin the session with gayatri mantra over to you ma'am uh it's ex uh, explanation thank you so much uh, so uh, i think we we should we, we should uh, on in the name of god we should uh, start the session of the day and we have a great speaker who have joined us today and before we begin the session as it's uh, as the tradition goes on so i would like to request you all to kindly visit the website of homeopathy 360 that is www.homeopathy360.com and also kavitakhomeo.com regularly we are trying our level best to promote homeopathy through uh, through our websites and uh, uh, promote homeopathic knowledge through our different uh, efforts on the website as well you can also mail us the articles and publications uh, for homeopathy 360 website research papers etc Uh, for getting published and also for homeopathic heritage a peer reviewed journal by bjn publishers for that you can also mail us the articles etc so uh, now i would take this privilege to thank mr manish jain the director of bjn publishers who have uh, given us this opportunity and platform to organize this webinar series and is trying his level best to promote homeopathic knowledge during this lockdown period and also to the organizer to the lady behind this webinar series uh, and all the team uh, the whole team of ka homeopathy study group for uh, being with us and giving homeopathy 360 an, uh, an opportunity to collaborate with uh, uh, kavita holistic approach up to organize this webinar series and i'm really thankful to dr kavita kukunur ma'am She is a homeopathic practitioner from India and graduated her BHMS from University of Health Sciences, Andhra Pradesh, India. She has been into practice since 1995 and has moved to USA in 1998. She has served several homeopathic organizations in her past uh, 10 to 15 years, pro bono as board member, administrator, advisor, president, and COO. She has also conducted over 50 monthly professional web. Vinas providing HNA CEU integrating world renowned homeopaths from around the globe she also mentors students and conducts lectures on homeopathy and homeo profile access internationally in the united states she is a she is a certified classical homeopath cch and outreach coordinator of chc pr committee registered member of nash and certified hp supervisor president and ceo of kavita holistic approach founder and director of ka homeopathy study group lmhi member liga medicorum homeopathica internationalis and lifetime member of national center of homeopathy she is also the board certified alternative medical practitioner from american alternative medical association and also a member of cabin friendly foundation uh, which who is serving to serving poor people in greater needs in india she and her husband also supports and promotes lot of charity services in north america so we have this uh, great lady uh, very down to earth and so sweet uh, with us uh, i would like to request her to please uh, say a few words about today's lecture before we begin over to you ma'am dr yashikam i regret all the beautiful words um, you just said as blessings to you hello everyone i want to sincerely thank manish jain the managing director and dr yashika for giving this great opportunity to us to share holistic approaches of healing through energy medicine dr yashika is very sweet we inspiring to all young homeopaths she is working very hard on these webinar series and doing amazing job thank you I congratulate Manish Jain, Dr. Yashika, and Enter Homeopathy 360 team for their great accomplishment. 
It's a wonderful platform connecting homemakers around the globe with the latest updates, events, job opportunities, materials, and many more with the best online services. I highly recommend to visit the website homeopathy360.com and be part of it. And uh, thank you again, Dr. Yashka, for giving me opportunity to make announcements. Ka Homeopathy Study Group is the first homeopathy pro bono study group from United States that has come up with this new concept of uniting world renowned practitioners throughout the globe. The Ka mission and vision is very unique to inspire young homeopaths mentoring, providing experience in educational purpose through the continuing education of homeopathic webinars. And Ka celebrates safe to cancer survivors through book inspirational talks. We congratulate and send many blessings to Professor Regina, who is safe for cancer survival with lung metastasis. He is our inspiration and back end of this car study group. Save homeopathy. American for homeopathy choice has made a petition for submitting comments to FDA to protect homeopathy in USA. We have currently over 13,000 uh, 500 comments. Our goal to, is to reach 100,000 comments by December 2nd. And it will just take two minutes and we will post the link in the chat. Now, CVC based certification is due on November 30th. If any practitioner from the United States is looking for continuing education credit, we have on November 15th at 10 30 a.m. Eastern. Car webinar on management of thyroid disorders with homeopathy by Karen Allen. It is H N approved. You can visit kavitakehomeo.com. And on November 8th, we have Dr. Raj Manchinder and Kathy Lemon speaking on the challenges for homeopathy in COVID-19 and homeoprophylaxis. Today, our honorable speaker is Yan Yamamoto from California. She is very pleasant, sweet, humble, and adds great value to our study group with her creative ideas and beautiful content for our car newsletter. Yan works at True Jewel Wellness and Homeopathy and Yan Rainbow Essence. She is integrative, holistic, energetic practitioner and nationally certified classical homeopathy space, NCCA accredited, as well as trained and certified as carefully irradiologist an integrative nutrition course. She is also a registered pharmacist, especially prevention in HIV and AIDS. Currently, she is in progress for earning diploma. She works with essential oils on a deeper, soulful level in a technique called spiritual phytoessence therapy. Phytotherapy, we can take of a pressure system and sound healing. She got her Bachelor of Science Pharmacy, Doctor Pharmacy, with an emphasis on pharmacognosy, medicine of science from Purdue University. She is a residency and fellowship in psychopharmacy from USC School of Pharmacy. She got her professional RS from homeopathic certificate from American Medical College of Homeopathy. She is an integrative nutrition health coach. She is also a member of American Academy of HIV Pharmacy. And she got her homeopathic certification called in sound remedy from Life Energy Medicine. She got her homeopathic internship from Dynamic School of Homeopathy. She works in the areas of women's and children's health and wellness, immune, endocrine, and nervous system imbalance, as well as enjoy assisting those who wish to engage more deeply with their personal goals. Let us welcome Yan to our webinar. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for such a nice introduction of our speaker of the day. Uh, before we hand over the session to Dr. Yan, ma'am, uh, I would request Dr. Shweta, ma'am, also. Uh, she is with us. Uh, she is the chief administrator of Ka Homeopathy Study Group and has completed her BHMS, MD, Home, DSC, PG, DHP, PhD, and right now a PhD scholar. So I would request her to please uh, uh, say a few words about Dr. Yan and then we can begin the session. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Yashika. Uh, 
a very warm welcome to today's speaker, uh, Yan Yamahoto. And uh, I never met her before, but we are connected through Kavita Holistic Approach and through, through Dr. Kavita Ma'am. So very nice to see you today. Uh, looking forward to learn more about homeopathy. All the best, Ma'am. Thank you so much, Dr. Shrita. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. So, so we can begin this session uh, now. Uh, if the internet is fine, then you can on your video, turn on your video. So my, uh, my connection... Over to you, ma'am. Yan, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, my connection is a little low, it's saying. Oh, here we go. Okay, so thank you again. And just an additional thank you to Homeopathy 360, Mr. Manish Jain, and to Kavita Kukunor and the KHA Homeopathy Study Group Pro Bono, Professor Regina Mianelli, Dr. Yashika, and Dr. Shrita. Thank you so much. And for all who will be listening, I uh, thank you. Um, it's an honor to be part of this series. Um, so I will get ready to begin. Um, I'm not sure on the slide. Oh, here we go. Okay. So welcome um, to our series and through Homeopathy 360 and KHA study group. Pardon me if my camera goes on and off. The internet's a little low, but we're up with these slides. So that's great. So today, um, I'm going to be presenting um, Qigong Organ Sound Remedies. And these are remedies that I was inspired to start creating. Um, and I have started using, and um, I'd like to share that, um, as well as sharing um, just first a little bit about the background for uh, Qigong uh, organ sounds and sound healing. So today the objectives I wanted to primarily do through this talk today and sharing um, is to introduce the different organ sounds that are practiced in traditional Chinese medicine through one of the branches called Qigong, which is a slow moving martial art similar to Tai Chi. And um, they also do medical Qigong in which they uh, balance again, spirit, emotion, body. So it's a body mind practice. And it's one of the branches within traditional Chinese medicine. Um, the benefits of sounding and toning based on the five element theory as it is in traditional Chinese medicine. Um, I'll introduce the Qigong sound remedies that are the homeopathic remedies. Um, share some initial proving data that I've been working on with one of the sounds and just hopefully expand our awareness for another supportive modality and share any um, little caveats or pearls that I've um, come across along the way as I'm developing this work. So just before I begin with the five elements, I wanted to just say, so before, how did I get into Qigong? I was um, going through um, other trainings of other bioenergetic and energetic modalities, including color, um, crystals, essential oils, and I had been practicing yoga for quite a while. Um, I primarily practiced Hatha yoga for many years. Um, I knew that I would go into more formal training, and so I was debating, do I go to acupuncture school or do I study homeopathy? Um, during that time of exploration, I discovered and um, got introduced to Qigong, which I just loved. Um, it stayed with me. And, um, and then I ultimately found that my affinity was for homeopathy. Um, as a practitioner now, um, a fairly newer practitioner within the last uh, three and a half formal years, maybe five to seven uh, mentored as well, that um, 
I find that there's different modalities that we can bring into our cases. And so the more I learn and practice and go on, um, I see where other modalities and other tools can help us as well in our cases. So these remedies, along with the Qigong sounds themselves, are based on five elements. Um, and each element is associated with the color and a major organ and a minor organ. Um, and so the color of green, uh, which is associated with the element of wood or tree, tree energy, um, is primarily governed by the liver and its minor hollow organ, the gallbladder. Um, and the next element is fire, which is represented by the color red, and that governs the heart, and the minor organ is the small intestine. The next element is the uh, element of earth, which is represented by the color golden yellow, and that tends to govern the spleen, the stomach, and pancreas. And when I say govern, um, that is the um, meridian systems. So they affect the major organs, but they also affect the pathways in which those meridians go through the organs um, as well. Uh, so the next element is metal, which is represented by the color white, and its organ affinity is the lung and its... Um, large intestine is the minor organ. And then the last element is water, which is represented by the color blue, and that governs the kidney and the urinary organs. And these colors will come into play in a little bit. So moving on, uh, sound healing, I feel in general, is sound healing. And I did, um, along the way, prior to coming into Qigong, I um, got to be trained with um, toning, um, toning with your voice, letting out sounds, um, activating whenever we uh, sing, whenever we chant, whenever we have any kind of sound like that, especially where there is a longer sustaining exhale, we're creating oscillations and vibrations in the body. Um, often too with the, this model and also I feel with sound and anything holistic, it's um, representative of a universal model. So it's the macrocosm of also, and also within the macrocosm within yourself, which is the microcosm and down and down and down and down to each level going down to the tissues, the cells, the then emotion and the invisible, the spirit. Um, so it's the whole person. So um, as far as the Qigong sounds, uh, they balance and they harmonize. And um, I came to find out through research that the first medicinal modality within TCM was actually music. Um, so the sounds and the tones, they stimulate the organ system based on the five element theory and they align on all levels of the person, spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical, just as uh, we do with our practice in homeopathy. So sound in life, I feel that this is where this, this everything comes alive. As, as I mentioned, the oscillation. So sound is a wave. It's a frequency, it's a vibration, it's an oscillation. Um, we work with frequencies in homeopathy too. We understand this. We understand the model of how this connects in with all living things. Um, this is a link on the slide here. Uh, it's called the story of singing sand. And um, you can go on to YouTube or on the, on the net here and um, look at this link. But um, it's just a demonstration of how sound moves matter. And this is the practice of somatics. 
And here I just have a picture of it as an example, also with the link. And there's many, many examples that one can view on video of YouTube where sound um, rearranges things in beautiful sacred geometry um, and, and just creates something that is of structure, but it also has uh, uh, emotion behind it. It has a sacredness behind it in its arrangement. Um, it has an order too. And there's many other um, sound frequencies which create different shapes and different um, configurations. The other thing that I encourage uh, those to look at if they're interested is that looking at how sound makes water dance. So there's different frequencies in which um, they can be playing with uh, Tibetan bowls or sounding bowls, uh, singing bowls, and you will see water dancing. So it, it really is alive, even though we cannot see it. And that's something that's not unfamiliar with our audience. So there, there are tr six traditional organ sounds in Chinese medicine, which we practice in Qigong. And it's the six sounds are referred to as liu, zi, jue. And basically the six sounds are um, designed to clear those meridian systems with concentrations on those organ systems. They clear and purge stagnant energy from those organs and open the meridians. And so as I spoke in the first slide, it's based on the five elements. Um, all the way back in 420 to 589 BC, Tao Hong Jing, uh, he wrote a book that was uh, talking about uh, expanding one's lifespan and having basically healthy mind, healthy disposition, um, much like uh, Hahnemann and all of the others that follow this model of um, working holistically. He was a Taoist practitioner and a Taoist master. He was also um, an alchemist. And he focused mostly on meditation and visualization. So I was always amazed at how old this practice is. Originally, the six sounds were just using breath and sound. And then later, uh, in the Ming Dynasty, they added movement to the sound. So the, the six organ sounds became a moving meditation. And I say this is a nice tool to teach your clients because I always like to give my clients um, tools to work with for self-care in between and in situations also when they need to resort to self-care. They have sort of a toolkit um, that they can start to uh, develop themselves and they become stronger I feel uh, for it as well they become more resourceful and they also start to get in touch I think um, better with the with themselves and their body um, so during the Ming Dynasty what they then did is they took the breath and sound that was originally from the six sounds and they and visualization and they added uh, movements the movements in Qigong correspond to uh, also moving along those meridians and um, kind of embracing uh, what that organ will be, what that organ is kind of representing. And I'll demonstrate that in a moment uh, later in this talk. Um, so this kind of became a fitness exercise as it developed over time. And this uh, Dr. Ling Tong, he de developed it further to where he took the sounds, the sound healing from Qigong. And he started then to uh, bring it into um, hospitals and also to teach students as well. So today there are hospitals um, in China um, and maybe elsewhere in the world, but particularly China that um, do qigong and do qigong sound healing um, with with all of their clients. Um, so 
generally with sound, we, we move the breath anyway. So if you think about singing or chanting or toning, you are always going to have to engage the breath. So with the inhale, we're taking in fresh air, we're taking in fresh chi, we're revitalizing our cells, kind of like bringing in clean air, and that vitalizes everything, our whole being. Um, we can think about just sometimes when somebody is under stress and oftentimes they will recommend, you know, to step outside to uh, take a, you know, takes 10 minutes outside and walk in the sun and the fresh air. I mean, there is something to that that goes way back uh, along with taking in breath, taking in life, revitalizing, resetting, grounding. The exhale with the sound movements is that's where we actually make the sounds themselves. And when we exhale, we, we are purging. We're purging and taking out um, excess stagnation. The toning and the sounds helps to uh, loosen up and then remove toxins, removes kind of the stagnant vital force or chi from the organs. So we're waking up the organ systems, we're bringing in a little bit of fire when we do this inhale, exhale. Um, and so the exhale is stimulating and releasing. Um, and so with the sounds of uh, Qigong, there are often uh, two or three levels. The first level is one that's a uh, very vocal, where it'll be audible and you'll be you know, vocalizing the sound. The second and third level, depending on the, the teacher, depending on the practitioner and their lineage, um, the second uh, or third sound will be often whispered. And sometimes the sound will even be, after the whisper, will then be mentally directed. It's the second and third levels that of the, that sound sequence that tends to go deeper in the body. It also tends, just like um, higher potency homeopathic remedies, you're reaching the realm of the spirit, the spiritual realm, the emotional realm, uh, mental as well. And so it's starting to go through the whole person. Um, and uh, there's the six traditional sounds and then uh, different teachers and lineages will develop their own. So with the sound, uh, Qigong sound work, the most important is the exhale. So we tone upon the exhale and we're, we slightly restrain the passage of air so that it begins to extend the exhale. So for example, because um, the first uh, proving really results are with the heart sound. So one of the heart sounds is ha, ha. It, is almost universal to ah so many things come from ah but it's tending to be the heart center in this case ha is uh the qigong heart sound for that heart the meridian um, the element of fire so even though i'm going to extend and say ha i'm going to slightly restrain that passage of air so i extend my exhale uh, eventually the sound I'm going to direct it from my organ not just from my throat as you extend the exhale longer and longer we, what we do is we activate your vagus nerve and we stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system which helps get into the rest rest digest phase and that's why um, there's a lot of studies now coming out about um, the power of sounding, the power of the Qigong sounds themselves, um, also coincided with the many studies coming out to show, you know, any holistic modality that is working on uh, va the vagal reflex, enhancing the parasympathetic nervous system so that everything can kind of reset um, and 
currently there is um, research going on with these six healing sounds, what they have are finding, and the results I haven't been able to get yet. Um, but, but what they're finding is that there is an increase in alpha brainwave activity on an EEG 30 minutes after you do the six organ sounds of toning. There's also increase in theta brain activity on the EEGs. Um, now currently they're measuring biomarkers for inflammation. And with this, they are using the six organ sounds. Um, and they are looking at chronic diseases and they're also looking at cancer and how the six organ sounds are lowering biomarkers of inflammation and helping to, you know, help chronic diseases not progress, also help um, reverse uh, inflammation so that the body can begin to heal um, and not be in that the inflammatory state. Um, there is also currently now ongoing research um, where they're using the six organ sounds in hospitalized patients who have been hospitalized for pneumonia that, that have been diagnosed with mild to moderate um, cases of uh, COVID-19. So they're finding that they're trying to use the sound remedies as an adjunctive modality to help with the recovery of lung health following hospitalization for COVID in the mild and moderate cases. So those studies um, started, I believe, in May of this year. So again, just in reviewing the slide, um, so when making the sounds, the first sound is more vocal where, you, where it's audible. The second and third sound is often whispered or sometimes mentally directed. And when we whisper the sounds, the whisper, it does not have to be forced. It does not have to be a loud whisper. Um, in fact, it can be quite soft. And again, I think about this in terms of as a homeopath, it's just like when we give something that's more highly potentized, that's more subtle, it starts to go to the deeper levels on a more subtle energetic level for the person's energetic economy. It's very similar to the sounds. A lot of it as well as when doing the sounds, just like I think many modalities is um, intention. So we are directing um, this energy, this sound. We're directing movement, we're directing color, and basically we're directing intention. So I'm going to just um, go over the six traditional sounds, and I'm going to kind of go a little bit out of order here of this slide, but I will go through the six traditional sounds and also with the whisper. Um, so the first sound is of the lungs, and the lungs represents metal, and the color of the five elements is white. So the lung sound spelled QI is pronounced Z like a Z, and it is Z. And I'll cut it short for time. <laughs> I won't extend the exhale <laughs> as long as the regular. <laughs> so um, that is the lung, uh, the first sound. Now the whisper sound for this, the traditional um, uh, six sounds. Um, this sound is S. And I'm going to whisper it a little louder for the presentation, but normally you would do it softly. So it's just like the letter S. When we do the second phases of these sounds, this is when we purse the lips more and we extend the, we extend the exhale even longer. Um, 
And through, through this series of sounds, what we will do then is that if you're adding movement, there is a white crane um, soaring movement in which you kind of do your hands like a crane going in and out. And on the exhale, you add the sound. And I will... Um, I will talk about this movement towards the end as well as the intention of color. So here with these two sounds, so the first and second, we are stimulating um, the lungs. Mm -hmm. The next sound is going to be the kidney, which is uh, C-H-U-I, pronounced chui. Um, some of the books are more... Um, uh, other spellings, they may say C-H-R-E-E, -E, but it's pronounced chui. So you would direct your intention towards your kidneys. Chui. As one practices, they're going to take the sound from the kidney rather than the voice. The whisper sound is chu. And the motion is is um, is like a water fountain. So so as you're doing the whisper, you will bring up like a, a qigong movement. And think of the sound of water. Um, so the next sound that I will do will be the liver, and the liver is shu, shu. And then the whisper sound associated with this traditional six organ sounds is just saying shh, like saying be quiet, or... And here, if we add movements later, uh, which I'll go over, uh, we have a movement which brings the hands up to the out outer part of your liver meridian, going over your liver. And because wood is and liver is tree, we open up. It's a tree opening. So the sound on the inhale and exhale is the sound. So you think of the leaves kind of opening up and rustling. And that is stimulating that meridian. The next um, sound is the stomach, which is who, who, and again we gather that sound kind of from that area of the stomach, which is also the spleen, mm -hmm. the pancreas area for TCM, um, for the stomach. Also, the same whisper. Uh, same sound, but in a whisper. Ooh. And with this sound, I'm going to stand a bit. We gather around the stomach, and we almost move water, like you're moving water. Like your fingertips are on top of water, and you're standing in a pool of water. You're moving it around. Ooh. Ooh. We're also sending this energy down to the earth. The stomach is represented by the elements of earth. The next, uh, the next sound is heart, which I did um, initially, but we'll do again. Is ha different than it looks from the spelling, um, and it's also the same in the whisper. This one is the bear moving through water, and so the that is almost like the perfect rest stroke. Um, so ha. You can focus on your heart. Ha. And then the whisper, you're going to be swimming like the perfect breaststroke. So you're gathering chi, you're bringing it towards the heart. So as you're going, you inhale. And I'm doing the whisper a little louder again, just for the, the talk, but it would be quieter. 
Sometimes that sound can even be inaudible if you're just directing that sound. Um, the last of the sounds is the sixth one, uh, which is the triple burner, and that's not associated with any organs. It runs centrally. It's through something called a governing vessel. Um, helps with your regulating your um, body temperatures. Um, and that sound is he. And, and th this one is he. And also, again, on the triple burner, same thing. The whisper is also he. And this one, you are just going up to the universe, gathering she, and bringing it down. So it's So that's a, that's a um, minor recap here of the six traditional organ sounds with their whispers. Um, so just take a moment here and then um, I'm going to go in now to the remedies that I have made from the Qigong sounds. So I also, I have studied with Master Ming Tong Gu. Um, I've studied with Jeff Primat. I do some studies with Robert Ping, um, and I tap into a lot of other Qigong, um, different masters who might give workshops, Daisy Lee as well. There's all kinds of Qigong, um, and Master Ming Tong Gu, he also does five element Qigong. So um, his, uh, his sounds are a little different, and I'll go through that in a moment. So having then practiced and knowing that there's remedies from sound and just also loving sound and loving this kind of modality of intention, movement, breath, even color, I wanted to make remedies out of the Qigong sounds and see what would happen. So I took, I toned um, the different Qigong sounds into spring water. I started this work about two years ago, and then I potentized it by hand using the Hanumanian method of dilution and succussion. And I did five sounds. I have not done triple burner yet. Uh, but I did liver, heart, spleen, lung, and kidney. And these are the names that I gave them. So for liver, I, I'm calling it positive courage. For heart, it's the heart fire. For spleen, it's coming down to earth. Lung is my song. Um, and kidneys are the kind of kidneys. So with um, each of the organ sounds, the meridians, and the tones, there's different emotions associated with each one. And so um, we're also purging these emotions, but also bringing in the positive aspect of that emotion. So for example, um, the liver is often, you know, associated mostly with anger, um, can be frustration as well, positive aspects, courage. Uh, kidney emotion can be associated more with fear. Positive aspects are just kind of ease, creativity, flow with the heart. Um, you know, we have, there could also be anger in the heart, but uh, tension and positive aspects are joy and love. For the lungs, we have uh, sadness and grief and positive aspects of that are um, basically, again, very much um, like water in a way, um, creativity, structure, flow, expression. Um, and let's see, I think I forgot which other one did I know? Uh, the stomach, yes, so the stomach and spleen, the earth element. Um, again, you can have butterflies in the stomach, worry, concern, um, with that, with that one too, it also brings in confidence, bringing you down to earth. It's grounding. Um, 
they work all together and just like everything we have different times in our life and different aspects when things change our inbounds get out of balance and so um, in making these remedies also I reflected on what is my personal experience with toning um, generally when I tone I have a, a higher mental capacity I'm more focused I'm more open to love I think I um, blockages are released so the heart center is wider um, I feel more grounded and clear um, on a more comical note whenever I tone um, <laughs> the dog gets very relaxed and very happy <laughs> um, and so uh, a lot more positive aspects came through toning that I did many years ago before coming into Qigong and now here we are um, and homeopathy so currently just working on a book about these remedies and a, about this kind of um, modality and um, self-care as well so again I uh, studied with uh, also Master Ming Tong Gu and um, he has sounds in which they're a little different but he also goes through three phases physical where you stimulate and wake up the organ adding fire second and third sounds open the emotional and mental and spiritual bodies and so his sounds kind of are combined and they move in one uh, swoop uh, in the three phases they're not just a single sound so his heart sound which is part of this heart remedy proving is she versus ha she shin xiao and so with his um his heart sound is she then we get to the emotional little softer she and xiao is for the spiritual and mental and here we can move up the energy you guide it up so these are uh, his sequence um, of how he has his sounds passed down from him, his lineage um, and so what I did is I potentized both the six sounds along with some of the sounds of Master Gu in these remedies and I'm just going to now briefly go over the heart sound so the heart sound is one in which I was able to begin doing some provings again the heart sound corresponded to the meridian heart meridian um, in music it's associated with the note C sharp and the color is red and um, I put in here and uh, just out of delight that basically that the red blood cells they do react to the human voice uh, they're filled you know anything I think with fluid and water um, so they respond to toning and the heart sound itself actually helps with circulation all the way up to the brain um, so this was the first remedy I made again toned it into spring water using the two uh, different sets of sounds and I started to potentize what I found is that 1x and 3x were about the same as if I were toning um, 5x potency started to go a little bit deeper on all the levels and originally I thought well I will try to do a Fibonacci sequence but then I tried 6x and that seemed to be the good sweet spot where all the levels were um, affected but it also had a little bit more of a sustaining effect so the 5x didn't quite have that sustaining effect like the 6x did so I kept it at 6x for now um, with the heart sound remedy it focuses on the heart but also the brain is considered the sense organ and TCM medicine uh, with the heart 
again ruled by the element of fire. And also in TCM and Qigong practice, the heart is linked to your consciousness. So some of the next slides are information about initial proving data that I got while doing the proving. There has been uh, six provers. And um, what they described are things on the mental emotional level that the tension was leaving the heart once they took the remedy. Uh, a space in the heart was closing, meaning for this person a leakage had stopped. This particular prover um, has is uh, under constitutional care, um, but has a weak organ affinity for the heart. Um, in a couple of provers, there was the symptom of sighing. Uh, sadness moved through them after taking the remedy. Looking back, stoical sadness, holding, holding me steady even though they were going through this feeling um, indifferent to other suffering and a fragility in their emotional core. So these are the words of the provers um, as, as, they, as they wrote and spoke. Other mental emotional symptoms from the provers' words, strong and secure in my spine, especially behind the heart strong handwriting, strong and resilient, resiliency, don't feel in my head, feel in my strength, release, let go, let go of dark fears in my heart, release fears, overcome fear. One prover was able to take a long uh, mountainous motorcycle road trip um, with much less fear and actually come into joy and have enjoyment and she had been uh, after taking the, the remedy um, prior, she could not really um, ride near the edge of a high road with a drop-off, um, but she was able to do that with her father. Tears of joy, uh, other mental emotional words that came out from the provers, freedom, independence, empowerment, cleansing, healing, robust, strong and clear, less fear to what normally would cause great anxiety, less worry about stuff, big and small, ride the wave, very accepting. Uh, that was some um, exact words from two provers. Boundaries were reinforced. Easier to make a decision didn't need positive reinforcement. Efficient, helped my procrastination. I think one of the provers also told me it helped her golf game. Um, more accepting, more empathetic, grateful. This, this word came through a number of times in uh, four of the provers. Also in four of the provers, again, multitasking with focus and concentration after taking the heart sound remedy. Stockiness, loosened mental release, or stuck, I think that's supposed to be stuckness, sorry. Loosened mental release and feeling free. Uh, this is just a uh, written by one of the provers. Before I took the remedy, I was feeling really stuck and anxious. So I'm starting to see different keywords coming through. I was trying to force myself to do something in my business that was not in alignment with my soul. I was crying a lot, not sleeping well, and in the end I hurt my back and I was forced to slow down. I did, and I realized that I had been trying to do stuff that I didn't feel good to, that didn't feel good to me. I stopped, and I was able to realign with my own inner guidance. From then on, I really listened to that inner voice and followed that when it came to my business and my life more too, it was a big turning point for me. In um, the Provers, there was some dreams. They dreamed of music. Um, one had a positive one with the horse and a dog, and they, they say they usually never dream. On the physicals that came through uh, with the Provers, there was pulsing in the left ear, quivering and pulsing, earache which cleared after two days, 
fullness in the right ear on one prover, left ear congestion open up. Also um, seeing maybe some left-sidedness with this remedy, possibly um, her blood pressure strong and steady, pulse strong, slower than usual, double vision, headache in the vertex, ache and sharp pains in the heart. Other physicals, voice clear and stronger, energy improved, deeper sleep than usual, numbness in the lower extremities is decreased. Other key words that came through with the provers, grateful, less anxiety, boundaries, ideas, uh, idea was there not as affected. Um, seal around me, walk into the office, know how energy, know the energy, uh, still no, don't care. So there was an indifference, um, not taking it on. Call it a buffer or a screen between someone um, can unload. I think there was a mention of having a seal around them, inside not as affected, still really care, but not self-harming, do best, can be fair. If people don't like it, there's nothing I can do. Um, um, these number of these provers were also overachievers. They were, um, they accommodated, they were selfless in a lot of the times in their life. Um, so I have a follow-up to one case. Um, prior to that, there's another follow-up. Um, one of the provers reported that a few months after um, she had taken the sound remedies, um, she went to her acupuncturist, the acupuncturist noted to her that there, uh, she was more open with her meridians. Um, in a follow-up to an ongoing case um, in which one this person was a prover, um, recently I redosed her again and gave her heart sound remedy, um, not as approving, but gave that to her. She's been an ongoing client for five years. She's on a general constitutional remedy of lycopodium. I inherited her and she um, was originally had carcinosin and had another intracurrent of carcinosin. Um, when I, uh, shortly after I inherited her as a case, um, I had declared trauma and so I started that with Dove. Uh, she had a lot of bird remedy themes and she, and she fit Dove, um, which took her a little further than the carcinosin for her and then back on her constitution. So recently with um, the last few months, she's had tremendous, tremendous stress, external factors, and um, a, a former PTSD from sibling abuse kind of resurged after some traumas and um, lack of self-care. So um, treated her for exhaustion with FOSAC um, and redose constitution. Her exhaustion cleared, but during this time of trauma, she started to experience a lot of worry and runs of palpitations. So um, having had her known she had taken the heart sound, I tr wanted to try it again. I gave her the Qigong heart sound 6x, this time twice a day. Um, so after the first week, the episodes lessened of um, palpitations. Um, week two, I continued the Qigong heart remedy, but only once a day, and then I added the kidney remedy, the Qigong kidney sound. And following two to three weeks, that's now been resolved. Um, and I had given her also Califos on the cell salts. Um, so that's a follow-up to one case and how I kind of starting to use the remedies. Um, Let's see, so the other Qigong uh, sound remedies I use, I with the kidney one, I find that it is less intense than aconite, but it's for uh, useful for smaller shocks, those little jolts. Um, often um, to help the heart, uh, I may not start with the heart sound remedy. I might go backward on that TCM wheel and start with the liver or I might go to the stomach first, but I may start with the liver before I will introduce the heart sound remedy. Um, I might start with lung to kidney. 
So I kind of look at the case holistically, of course, and then I see where they're at from a five element perspective. And then I kind of go from there. Um, let me see. Uh, recent uh, case with lung, uh, the lung qigong sound remedy, releasing suppression, um, and what came out was sinus discharge and a cold for one client. Um, so I find them to be uh, useful as intercurrents. And again, um, so on the uses I see with this, uh, the sound, they purge, they purge the organ and open the meridian system. They add the fire. And in TCM, they, they feel that sound purges and color will fortify and bring out positive aspects of the organs. And I feel this is very important because if I, um, just what I'm seeing and finding is some caveats. If I have a very sensitive client or a client that has a, a nagging kind of um, organ affinity, weakness uh, affinity in an organ and a constitutional may not be covering everything. Um, what I find that is more helpful is that the sound remedy may stimulate, but then we have to clear. So um, I find it useful to have either movement um, with breath that I teach the client. And then the last part of that is the color. So as I was showing the example of the swan, of the um, the crane and the whisper with the lung sound, which is after that practice, then what, what we can do is that we direct the color that's related to that element. In this case, the lungs is white and TCM. And we direct the color white, bright white light to the lungs. We direct the color blue to the kidneys with their hands on the kidneys. We can direct, after we do the whisper sounds, the color green to the liver, beautiful warm red or pink red to the heart, um, to the stomach area, we, pancreas, spleen, with the earth element, we would direct the color golden yellow. So one of the things I'm finding is that with sensitive uh, clients is that um, it can stimulate something and if they don't have a way to clear or to drain, then that can cause an aggravation, even though these are only 6x so far. Um, we'll probably keep them there, but um, even though they're lower potency. So if the person doesn't have a method of clearing through movement, meditation, Reiki, other forms of color therapy, one can use um, a corresponding drainage remedy or um, teach and direct how to do through movement and color of that organ system based on the TCM. Otherwise, there can be possible um, aggravation by just stimulating. And that's something I've found through a couple of sensitive clients. Um, we can use these again as intracurrents to homeopathic remedies. They work beautifully with cell salts, um, sort of in a subacute as well. Um, they work wonderfully with color remedies, which are homeopathic or color therapy and self-directed teaching the client, uh, directing color to those organs. They work great with essential oils. Um, if you apply them to acupoints, that also helps kind of the release and the drainage and everything that's stimulating to then kind of level out and be processed. Um, and also these sound remedies I, I have found work really beautiful with Reiki. Um, so I just wanted to thank you. I will uh, answer any questions and the work is to be continued as a more approving work, but also a small book in progress for self-care with the Mini Materia Medica that I hope will come out in the next, uh, I don't know, four months. And um, I wanted to thank again um, Homeopathy 360 and Kavita Kukunar and KHA Study Group Pro Bono and all who are listening now and who may listen in the future. Thank you so much for this offering. And I hope that that this work um, will offer some uh, inspiration and, and any helpful hints. <laughs>
Thank you. And I want thank to you see. so much, ma'am. Yeah, thank you so much, ma'am, for a great presentation. It was so uh, lively, I would say, and so great. Uh, a very different uh, one. So thank you so much for a great presentation. I request uh, we have uh, Regina Ma'am also join, and I think Kavita Ma'am also yes. So I would like to request uh, by the time the doctors post the queries i think they don't have the uh, still there is no query being posted so by the time we can discuss the review uh, how was the presentation kavita ma wonderful uh, congratulations pian it's a beautiful Thank presentation you. and i thoroughly enjoyed in fact i did had a, a one session with pian um, in the past it was really nice and learning more new things today and also the interesting thing is the importance of the firm found remedies in this current situation for COVID patients to improve the lung condition. That research is really great, which you have brought up and very yes. helpful uh, in the current situation. And thank you so much, Ian, for sharing your knowledge. And we are looking forward for your book, We Call Organ Sound Remedies. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, uh, Professor Regina, ma'am, you want to say something? Yes, please. It was a wonderful webinar. Cheers to you. And um, I was focusing on the fitness exercises, the breathing and the movement meditation. And um, the remedies that you developed in parallel to color remedies <laughs> homeopathy and i think they can offer homeostasis to people like me like uh stage four lung cancers with metastasis because it is focused on the breathing and the heart chakra and uh, and you've got the spleen and the pancreas they are very important organs do you think that ian i do i think that yes uh they can definitely be very helpful and because it's a whole holistic um system where it's emotions mind body strengthening and along with the color or directed reiki or directed um, movement that will help process the sound remedies so that it will you know not cause aggravation but it will support enhance strengthen and then yes so i think together those would be really wonderful i do um yeah <laughs> you know what you were doing the exercises and pronouncing the I was making the sounds here too, and I, I felt my energy level going up gradually. It was Excellent. a blessing. Thank you very, very much from deep from my heart. Cheers my to you. My honor. Many blessings to your book that will help so many people, as well as the remedies you came up with, Qigong remedies. I'll be looking forward to purchase them and apply my daily routine. Blessings to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Regina. Thank you. Such an honor. Thank you so much. You are being so much, yeah. ma'am, for your wonderful words. Uh, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Now is it visible? Your video is not. So I want to request the audience. Now it's visible, ma'am. It is not visible, yes, yeah, I, I cannot see. We can hear you. Now it's visible. You. No. no. Now? <coughs> now? Join again. <laughs> now? Uh, yes. Yes. Can you join yes. again? So, uh, by the time, we, I just uh, uh, say a query. There are two questions. Uh, one from Dr. Deepa. Uh, please share your experiences about color remedies. 
and one from uh, one question is imponderabilia is not much used in present homeopathic treatment why so these are two questions and i uh, by the time i'll just join again okay uh, so uh, let's see so the first question my experience i with the color remedies is i originally read ambika waters um, book she's a homeopath and she invented the homeopathic color and sound remedies I read her book. I found it by accident in a library. And I said one day I'd love to study with her. And so I took her classes with color and sound remedies. I use her remedies often. Um, and um, I just enjoy her work a lot. And so that's where I came from with color and sound. Uh, not, uh, not so much the sound, but the color remedies. And the second question was, I didn't hear the full question. Um, would you mind repeating it? Yeah, Ma'am, the question was imponderabilia. Uh, usually, imponderabilia, uh, the source, oh. the medicines from so, sourced from imponderabilia are not used much in homeopathy. So, uh, what is the reason, like, why people are not using it frequently? Oh, the like imponderables, yes. Um, you know, I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know why people are not using it um, as much. Um, I don't know if they're just not as highlighted sometimes during our training. Um, or, and also I think with imponderables, some of them, um, maybe there's not as many provings, but also that they're a bit esoteric. And so I think that they kind of come into your field of use in a way that's not always direct. And um, oftentimes they find the practitioners who do use them a lot or they have them um, in their repertoire is that they have an affinity for them themselves as well. But I couldn't fully answer that question. <laughs> I'm not really sure. I think part of it's the affinity of what you're exposed to and also part of what you are interested in. But it is harder to find data uh, and cases sometimes as well. Um, and so there can be an esoteric nature to them as to them as well, just as they are esoteric a little bit anyway, being imponderables. Um, but I think that they also mm -hmm. offer a very powerful um, um, you know, tools for us in addition to all of the other remedies that we do have. I think, um, so yeah, that's a, that's a good question. <laughs> Can I add one more thing, Jan? Yes, please. My, so in my practice, I have used the imponderability occasionally, but all remedy, it really helped the way they all talk about the energy, the everything. So like when the regular constitutional remedies and it, it do, do not point to any of these so and solely to the different ones it helped hmm? and as far as the color remedies as uh, Yana was saying Ambika waters I really use most of the uh, color remedies all the color remedies and few sound remedies uh, in my practice and as a supplement and they are helpful like green remedy violet uh, orange uh, occasionally red to brown and um, Ambika sound remedies I have used but we need to use it yarn the three form sound remedies you will wait <laughs> that no bias use them all <laughs> but thank you and yes thank you. I think that's true uh, Kavita thank you for adding that thank you so much ma'am for uh very nice explanation there is one more question i think from dr kavita mamurli uh, please explain us some more of singing sand remedies in short if you can say something singing mm -hmm. sand remedies singing sound remedies uh, i have not yeah. done singing sound remedies have you done singing sound remedies singing sand that's oh, singing! Oh, oh, singing sand. Sorry. Oh, that is um, that was just a website <laughs> about how the how the the somatics, how the sound moves 
the sand to make different configurations and shapes. And so that was, um, I wanted to just demonstrate how we cannot see sound necessarily, but how the waves, the oscillations and the frequencies are, are quite alive and how they affect matter. Um, and so just bringing that into sound affecting matter, meaning even our cells and every part of our being. Um, so yeah, that was a visual that I just thought to provide and there's, it's a website as well. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Professor Regina is saying that uh, perhaps we understood more. We could use so more, some more. So yes, she will continuously be disturbing you to learn more, obviously. So uh, thank you so much. I hope all the queries of the audience are being sorted. Still, you have any query you can post in the chat box. We still have two to three minutes. We can discuss the same. Yeah. Okay, there is a comment from Dr. Ashok. The use of colors during acupressure cure, uh, cure, cure and sun therapy with different colors have very good effects equals to homeopathy like he's just commenting um, the the that he has got good results with use of colors during acupressure cure thank and you. sun therapy so yeah. thank you so much uh, dr madan sir thank you for, for your uh, for great. your great so thank you i think all the queries have been cleared uh, we, i personally want to thank uh, dr yan ma'am for being with us and pairing out time from your busy schedule to guide uh, the audience and a great informative webinar. Uh, so I want to, with your permission and uh, Dr. Kavita's permission, can we, ma'am, uh, please uh, update about tomorrow's session and then we can end up the webinar. Kavita, ma'am? Sure. Uh, yeah, can you hear me, right? Yes, okay. Yes, so, yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can, we can hear you. Yeah. Tomorrow we have Dr. Girish Gupta who speaks about evidence-based research of homeopathy in gynecology. So at the same time, and uh, do not miss that great opportunity. Thank you so much, Yan, for sharing your knowledge. It was wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Yashika and uh, Manishan for giving us this great opportunity to work with you, collaborate with homeopathy patients. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you and so Dr. much, Yanma. Thank like you so much, Yes, uh, Would you like? Yes, Dr. yes, Kaita? yes. I, I was about. To, yeah, I was about to ask her, uh, ma'am, uh, Shweta, ma'am, you want to say something uh, on today's session? Yeah, definitely. This was a very interesting and new topic, and I learned a lot uh, new things today. Uh, about the color effects, about the sound effects uh, in practice. And uh, I want to congratulate Yan for this wonderful talk. Thank you so much, uh, ma'am, for sharing uh, your knowledge with us. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. My honor. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, cheers, yes. So finally, we come to the end of the session of today and uh, we present our gratitude to all the participants as well as all our dignitaries and speaker of the day. And uh, hope you guys will join us tomorrow again with Dr. Girish Gupta, a lot to learn from him always. So thank you so much, everyone. Ma'am, with your permission, can we end the session? Thank you, Dr. Yash. Okay, so uh, great. Bye-bye. Good night. Take care, everyone. Uh, See you all tomorrow. Namaskaram. 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 Namaskaram.